we'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online community for creative people who want to learn new things and level up their work. It has thousands of classes on many topics, including 2D and 3D animation, creative writing and film production. Skillshare is a creative learning hub and there are no ads or pop-ups to bug you. With premium classes constantly being created, there's always something new to help you in your creative journey. We love the course Indie Filmmaking, Get the Blockbuster Look on a DIY Budget by Noyen and Noyen, which takes you through step by step all the processes needed to create your own blockbuster, including visual effects. Boom! Especially for Yarn Hub viewers, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description and sign up will get a free trial of premium membership. Support the channel, sign up, and send us the details of your blockbuster movie creation. It was June the 16th, 1943. Unescorted and vulnerable, a lone Boeing B-17E drones over the remote Solomon Sea. This four-engined flying fortress is now commonly known as Old 666, thanks to its original tail number that ended in 666. On board, 25-year-old Captain Jay Zemer Jr. and eight crewmen enjoy a few minutes of calm in their armored warbird. Previously, it had been an old piece of junk that had been dragged to the end of the airstrip to be cannibalized for spare parts, before being commandeered by Zemer. She may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts. He made a lot of special modifications himself. Old 666 was a demon in the air. The crew upgunned the old bird so much that it seemed almost comical, and it became the most heavily armed bomber in the Pacific. Zemer was loved by his men, as top turret gunner Johnny Abel later explained. We thought so much of Captain Zemer and had such trust in him and his ability that we didn't give a damn where we went, just so long as he wanted to go there. Anything okay by him was okay by us. The men are on a tough mission, a solo mapping run over the island of Bougainville and the Solomons. No escort, no formation, just them. And in a classic while you're at it boys moment, Command had told them that they need to also make a pass over the strategically important and incredibly well defended Buka Island too. Now over Buka, the captain and crew see a dozen A6M Zeros taking off from the airstrip on the island. Then what looks like another 12 take flight. It's just a matter of time before their 1000 horsepower Nakajima radial engines bring them in close to the lumbering B-17. Reaching altitude, the Japanese fighters circle menacingly just outside of gun range. But this B-17 is a wolf in sheep's clothing, and with a little luck, the Japanese pilots won't figure it out until it's too late. The crew have upgraded the number and caliber of guns. Old 666 is a 19-gun flying beast of a machine, and even the captain has a 50 caliber at his disposal. The Zeros make their move. From dead ahead, one starts in and towards the winged battleship. The closing speed between the two is approaching 700 miles an hour. Zima is first and unleashes a hail of 50 caliber rounds that knocks the Zero out of the sky. But fractions of a second later, a wall of cannon fire from another tears into the nose and cockpit. The blast and concussion send shrapnel into the arms and legs of 2nd Lieutenant Joseph Sarnowski. Though with incredible bravery, determination and resolve, Sarnowski crawls back to his gun and takes aim and shoots. His last act is to destroy another Zero before succumbing to his injuries. Captain Zima is now severely wounded in both legs and worse yet, the rudder pedals have been destroyed. But all the while, the Zeros keep coming as the gunners blast away at anything with wings, sending torrets of high-velocity tracer rounds through the white-hot barrels and towards the enemy. Then, another Zero scores a direct cannon hit on the B-17, this time destroying the instrument panel, more vital controls, and the all-important oxygen system. Dazed, bloodied, Battered and fighting to stay conscious, Zima drops the nose and takes the 666 to just below 15,000 feet, where the crew can breathe. But the faster and more agile Zeros follow the shattered bomber down, all the while diving and strafing. The seemingly overwhelmed crew continue to battle on for nearly an hour. Time's ground to a halt, but the old Boeing and crew lumber on through the chaos. While in a last-ditch effort to bring her down once and for all, Five Japanese pilots fan out more than a thousand yards off the nose and make a final pass 
letting loose with everything they've got. Within range, guns ablaze on both sides. They swarm at, then past the B-17, filling it with holes before finally calling off the attack. Low on fuel, the 666 manages to turn slowly west and heads for home. Just over eight hours after the mission began, ripped open like an old sardine can, cables and wires dangling through the gaping holes in the fuselage and wings, old 666 landed back in New Guinea. Ground crews leapt into action to assist. Inside the cockpit, it's a terrible scene. Zima is initially pronounced dead, but to everyone's amazement, the brash young pilot still has some life left in him. But the others aren't so lucky. Six of the nine crewmen, including Lieutenant Sarnowski, succumbed to their injuries. Zima and Sarnowski are each awarded the Medal of Honor, and the remaining crew each receive a Distinguished Service Cross. Zima recovered from his wounds and lived a long and healthy life. Rumor has it that what was left of the old 666 wound up back in the US in 1944, where some say it spent the remainder of its days in a New Mexico scrapyard. Most viewers aren't yet subscribers. Please subscribe, like and share and watch more videos of ours. Thank you.